All right, let's get going. Welcome to DrupalCon Global 2020. This session is preparing you and your site for Drupal 9. Hello, my name is Kristen and I've been doing Drupal for a very long time. Feel free to reach me at anything at kristen.org or catch me on Twitter. Just a quick thanks to Hook42. Some of you might know Hook42 from the Drupal community and just wanted to give a big shout out to the Hook42 alum and hopefully you can connect with some of them during the conference. Here's an agenda for today. We're going to talk about why you might choose Drupal 9, some research you can do, auditing your existing site, visualizing what your new site might look like, planning for that, executing on that vision, and ultimately celebrating. So why might you choose Drupal 9? There are a lot of different CMSs out there and you know I'm partial to Drupal but you want to have reasons why you choose the frameworks that you do. And one of the big reasons that I would recommend using Drupal 9 is the innovation model. So starting with Drupal 8 they started doing a release, large releases every six months and that allowed for large features to be rolled out on a regular schedule and those are actually also scheduled which is a big deal and this has been a great improvement over previous versions of Drupal where you could you had to you know wait for a long time or you had to rely on the contributed projects to get that that kind of innovation. So that's one of the big reasons. But there's lots of reasons why you might want to choose Drupal 9. There's a lot of great accessibility support, multilingual, you know, the security is, is really top notch with the security team. And there's a lot of number, a lot of reasons why you might want to choose Drupal 9. So for those of you familiar with Drupal 8, though, you might look at that and go, well, those sound familiar. Uh, I think those are the same as Drupal 8 and you would be cre correct. That's everything that you get in Drupal 8 is what you get in Drupal 9. So what really are the differences then between 8 and 9? So one of the big deals is that when you go from 8 to 9, it's the easiest upgrade in a decade and you might have heard that already. Uh, previous update or upgrades from major versions have been a big deal and been a big headache in Drupal. So this is definitely a, a major step forward for the Drupal project. And one reason why it's a very easy upgrade is what they did is they just, it's very similar, the code between Drupal 8 and 9, other than they got rid of some deprecated or old code and which has actually made the code base uh, significantly smaller. And they also improved some testing by um, making that simplified as well. And then on top of that, the, one of the main differences is it up, updated a bunch of libraries that Drupal is dependent on, like Twig and Symfony. So as far as like visual changes, because all of those things are kind of under the hood, there are some things that make Drupal 9 better. And that would be the admin theme that has been worked on since Drupal 8, but should be stabilizing in, in 9.1, which is called Claro. And then also there's a contributed project called Olivero, which is for a modern front end theme. And that is, is slated to be added in Drupal 9.1 as well. So you probably have seen this quote, the big deal about Drupal 9 is that it should not be a big deal. And that's actually true if you're on Drupal 8. If you're on an earlier version, it's still unfortunately a big deal. So can you wait? So this is uh, some timing that you can keep in mind when you're, when you're planning out your project. If you're on Drupal 8, I would recommend that you just go forward and, and it's pretty straightforward for the most part, unless you're gonna do a big redesign. So just go forward and, and do your up, upgrade. But if you're on Drupal 6 or 7, then you definitely need to think a bit more about it. And um, we'll talk about that more later, but the support for Drupal 7 is actually a little bit longer than Drupal 8 due to COVID and, and giving people more time 
Drupal 8 couldn't be extended because it relies on Symfony, uh, Symfony uh, version that is going to be end of life. So that one is fixed for uh, 2021. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is do your homework, which is one reason why you're probably watching this. And we need to really get a handle on this, do some research. Some of the things that you could do are watch some of the other uh, sessions at DrupalCon Global. There are a number of uh, great Drupal 9 sessions. And here are, I think, pretty much all of them listed here. There's a deep dive, which goes into more nitty gritty. There's all the initiatives, both uh, new initiatives and also existing initiatives and kind of what's new, what's gonna happen with those. There's a session on migration tools that are um, available via Acquia and going from seven to nine to make it easier. And there's also a session for preparing your own custom code and contributed code uh, for Drupal 9, uh, the upgrade, and then of course the session. So one of the things you might want to do when you're researching is play with Drupal 9. So this is especially important if you haven't used Drupal 8 much. One option would be to use simply test me and that's a, a site you can go to and you can go ahead and spin up any version of Drupal. Well, I don't know about maybe not Drupal 4, but um, lots of versions of Drupal 9 and you would just go to simply test.me choose nine, I think 902 is available now, but choose whatever the latest and greatest of, of Drupal 9 is and launch Sandbox. And then, you know, wait a little bit of time, go get a coffee or uh, a tea and then come back and you're gonna see a new site there that's Drupal 9 and you can play with it. So some of the things you might wanna play with when you're checking out Drupal 9 are the media and media library, layout builder, uh, at Workspaces is an, a really interesting uh, experimental module that lets you build a bunch of content and you know nodes and blocks and things and bundle them all together and, and make them all live at once, which is a great new feature. And uh, some of these things have been in, in uh, Drupal 8 for some time, but like the content tra translation, but definitely I would focus if you're new to Drupal 8 if you want multilingual, obviously try the translation tools. But um, other than that, I would really recommend you take a look at Media, Media Library, Layout Builder, and Workspaces. So one of the things is to get prepared is you have to make sure that your hosting is going to support Drupal 9. And if you're on one of these hosting platforms, you'll be fine, um, probably some others as well. But if not, you just need to make sure that whatever hosting company you're using, or if you're hosting it yourself, that you meet these minimum requirements. And these have been updated since Drupal 8. So, you know, just, just double check that all of that's gonna work. If your hosting isn't ready yet, you could still do your update on, you know, your local, your own servers until the hosting is ready. But um, a lot of the major platforms are ready already. So some resources that are available are, you know, obviously the Drupal 9 documentation. There's a specific section called Upgrading Drupal, which talks all about going from six and seven to nine or eight to nine, which is super helpful. Hoitsi.hu has um, a, a number of Drupal 9 resources. I've started writing some more blog posts about Drupal 9 recently. And then there's a Drupal Association post, which is quite recent, which is nice by Tim and Angie. Byron has a pod, recent podcast. And I'll put these slides up on the session page soon. So after you've done some research and you've convinced yourself that, yep, I'm gonna go with Drupal 9, then next I would recommend that you do an audit of your existing site. And it's always good to kind of step back, take a look and see what's going on, get the big picture. But how much do you need to audit? And that really depends on what you plan to do with your new website. 
if you're on Drupal 8.8, .8, then, or 8.9, and you want to go to Drupal 9, then, I mean, it's super simple, so you don't really have to do too much. You're going to have to do a little bit of auditing and make sure that your code, um, you don't have any deprecated code. But other than that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you were on Drupal 6 or 7 and you wanted to do a big redesign, which would make sense at this point, then, you know, I recommend you audit as much as you can. So what are the kinds of things that you want to audit? Definitely you're going to be auditing the gap. So the gap would be how far away are you from Drupal 9? So that's not only the version you're on, uh, maybe you are on a really old version of Drupal 7 and you haven't been keeping up to date for some reason. So obviously you'd have to, um, to you're further away than if you were on the latest version of Drupal 7. And the other thing is, how not just your, you know, the core version, but all of your contributed modules, right? If you're using 300 contributed modules, which I hope you're not, I have seen that in audits, but yeah, hopefully you're not. But the more complex your site, then the bigger that gap's going to be. You're going to have to go and check everything and see what's supported and what's not. But there's a lot of things that you can audit while you're doing this. Uh, you could check your SEO and your accessibility and do site architecture and all that. So some tools that you can use when you're doing your audit include internal Drupal tools that are available. And we're going to go into more detail on some of these later. So upgrade status, we'll go into more detail. And that's a module that you can install on your site. Any reports is for the architecture of your site, and that's for Drupal 8. For Drupal 7, it, there was an arch architecture module that you can use instead. Site audit is some Drush tools you can run, security review, um, some other tools for security tightening, and the hacked module is for seeing if you've modified any of your core or contributed code. So those are all super important. As far as external tools, there's a number of them. Deprecation status, we'll talk a bit more later, but that's a, a website you can go to to check out contributed projects on drupal.org. And page speed insights or web page tests, there's a number of, of checkers you can do, um, lighthouse tools and things. A browser stack or any number of tools in order to check your site on different browsers and devices. Site Improve is one that can check accessibility or SEO, Waves an accessibility tool. So most of these are actually all free. Uh, I think Site Improve is the only one that is a paid uh, service. But then if as far as manually checking your site, obviously, you know, you can go take a look at the code, whether it's custom, custom modules or, or custom themes, review any documentation that you hopefully have, do manual testing, user testing, and that testing can be, you know, as many people as you can, you can use a professional service to user, user testing, or you can try to, you know, try to do that in-house or with friends and family. And then another one that's, um, you know, a bit tricky is doing screen reader testing because you have to really understand the tools in order to do that. So one important thing when you're doing an audit for your site is please don't use your production site, if at all possible. A lot of those tools that I mentioned, uh, you know, the external tools, you know, you point it at a site and it does a scan and it'll give you a report. Uh, I wouldn't point that at your production site, but hopefully you have a, a test site, a QA site staging where you can point that. That site should be non-indexed, so the crawlers aren't grabbing it. But um, yeah, definitely. And, and if you don't have an external site that's not production to run, a lot of those tools you can run on your local as well, your local environment. So like the Lighthouse tools with the developer. Um, De built-in developer tools. So once you've done your research and your audit, you want to try to figure out where you're going. You want to see where, what is your new site going to look like? And you get to dream. 
But before you dream, it's very important that you have a good handle on your budget and timeline for your project. And, you know, you, if you have a shoestring budget, but you want to do a huge redesign, those things are, aren't going to work together. So having a good idea of, you know, your max budget and if there's any deadlines you really, really have to meet, then that can help really define the scope of the project. And you need to decide, you know, if you have the money, then uh, especially if you're coming from six or seven, you know, can you do a redesign? And if you can, I highly recommend that. If you're coming from eight, um, you probably already did a redesign recently. So unless you were an earlier adop uh, early adopter, so I, it's maybe not as important there, but definitely from six or seven, if you can do a redesign as part of the project, that would be great. And you should assume that it's gonna cost roughly the same as what it cost when you built your original site, at least for the update from six or seven to nine. You're gonna to put together your team. And one of the most important things is make sure that whoever the stakeholders are on the project are very engaged and that you're getting proper review and sign off from them so that the expectations are very clear. You don't wanna go off and start building something and then come you know, figure out later that that wasn't really what they wanted. Some of the things that you should make sure to keep in mind when you're um, doing your discovery period is any of the audits that you already did, especially the gaps and the effort, uh, any, for all the changes that you're going to make, uh, well, you have to decide, are you gonna make changes? So if, if there's a feature, are you gonna leave it as is? I mean, you need to probably you know, port it somehow, but is, is it essentially the functionality going to be the same or do you want to redesign it as part of the project, possibly remove it, which would be great because then it makes it less complex and easier to do, or maybe you're adding new, new features. And the other thing is you want to make sure you understand your priorities for all of these things. Is it must have, you know, MVP, well, it'd be nice to have if we can fit it in, or maybe it's something you don't even want to do and you wanna make sure it's very clear that that's documented. Because sometimes later those things come back and people are like, wait, I thought we were gonna do this thing. But if you've documented it and say, no, we this is the reason why we decided not to do that, then everybody's on the same page. You're gonna end up having a lot of meetings and discussions during a discovery period. And sometimes they're called workshops. You're gonna be talking about all sorts of things, the UI, competitors, all the different features, branding, all sorts of fun stuff. And the goal really is just to figure out, you know, how is your audience going to engage with this site? And, you know, how can you improve and make it the best for your users. At the end of a discovery period, you would end, you know, you would, you end up with some deliverables, uh, functional requirements, you know, business requirements, a number of visual uh, deliverables, mockups, wireframes, sitemaps, you know, information architecture. Sometimes people will actually put together a, a simple prototype. And it doesn't have to be in Drupal 9, though, you know, it's possible you could put together some of those things there if you wanted. People sometimes will use other tools like Webflow or something in order to be able to test the navigation. So once you've done your discovery, you kind of have an idea of where you want to get, you need to make sure that you do proper planning in order to get there and to be prepared is half the victory. So how you get there will depend on where you are. And some of the steps are gonna be the same. So this slide really is talking about oh, the, the commonality. So if you're on six, seven, or eight, you're gonna do some of the same things. So make sure to start, you know, that your hosting supports Drupal 9. 
you want to clean up as much stuff as possible on your current site and remove anything you can. That will make things so much easier as you're upgrading. That would be, you know, modules you don't need, content you don't need, pretty much anything. Uh, just be careful if you're actually removing modules that you do it in a careful way. You want to disable the module, so Drupal 6 or 7, disable it, uninstall it, and then ultimately delete the code. You need to do that uninstall step to make sure the database gets cleaned up. Then you would update core and the contributed code to the latest version of whatever version you're on. So if you're on an older version of Drupal 6, and you, you would want to update to whatever the latest version of Drupal 6 is. Same with 7, same with 8. So just get to that last version, um, minor version, uh, or patch version of the version that you're on. And then you're going to do some specific steps that depend on if you're on 6 slash 7 or on 8. And we'll talk about those next. Then you would do any testing and then you get to celebrate. So there's kind of two approaches. If you're on six or seven, there's two approaches depending on what you envision for your Drupal 9 site. One thing is if you have a fairly straightforward site and you're pretty happy with it as is and you kind of just want to bring it over like it is, you would do this approach. First, you would create a new separate site, which is on Drupal 9 add any contributed projects to that. Obviously they have to support Drupal 9. Then any custom code you have, well, custom modules that you have on your site, you can use the module upgrader and that will help you convert your code, your custom module code from, actually that only works on Drupal 7, uh, convert that to uh, something that's supported for Drupal 9. And there are some other tools that are available for Drupal 6. Then what you can do is you can use the migrate suite. So there's migrate tools that are in Drupal and also in, in, so in core, and there's also some that are part of the um, contributed space. But you would use those tools in order to migrate the configuration of your site. So that would be the structure content types, vocabularies, that kind of thing. Migrate that over since you, you are happy with that structure. You can migrate that, that structure over. You can do any other kind of fine tuning. Um, and then you can migrate the data over in just one fell swoop. And that can happen using a UI. So there's a migrate Drupal UI module as part of core that you can use. And if, and it can take some time depending on the size of the site. So if you find that it times out, then you can use some Drush tools in order to, to do essentially the same thing. But if you find that your Drupal 9 site, you want to do something very different. And if you have any complexity on your site, I would recommend that you really think about doing this. You would want to rebuild from scratch. So you would still build a new base site in Drupal 9, add your contributed code, and you can still do the up updating of your custom code with module upgrader. But at that point, you wouldn't actually have the Drupal migrate tools build out the structure for you. You would build the structure just how you want it. And then and do the theming and everything, then what you would do is you would actually uh, use migrate and do a mapping between the old structure and the new structure. So there's a source, which is the old site and the destination, which is the new site. And you would do the mapping and you would have to write some code. It's, it's not that difficult. Um, it's mostly YAML files and you would do that in order to pull over the data from the old site to the new site. Now for going from eight to nine, it's the easiest upgrade in a decade. So it's pretty straightforward. So what you, where you've already gotten to Drupal 8.8 8 or 8.9, so the latest version, 
And then what you would do is for your contributed code, uh, you just go and find whatever the latest version is in Drupal 9. And if it's not available, then there are tools. Uh, so Rector is a tool that you can use to try to, to update that yourself. Um, and then you could patch it man man manually and contribute that back. Uh, your custom code, same deal, you know, there's Rector, the Rector tool that you can run to try to patch that uh, so that it's really easy or, you know, that covers about 50% of the cases or you can, you know, manually make changes and look at change orders, uh, change records, and then you would update the core to Drupal 9. The architecture things that you should be thinking about uh, are how you want to do layout, what kind of editing experience you want your content editors to have, SEO tools, a lot of that is in the contributed space, any kind of component model that you want to support, uh, if you're going to use pattern library or something of this, of, of like that, um, the content workflow, and then how are you going to do this migration? And that really depends on kind of, are you happy with your structure or not? And then, you know, you want to be able to pull that content over from the old site to the new site. There are a number of uh, DrupalCon sessions that cover a lot of these things. And that in order to figure out your architecture in Drupal 9, uh, media in Drupal 8, that's equivalent. So that works for Drupal 9 as well. Then I'll go over media, media library, uh, paragraphs versus layout builder, which is a, you know, something you really should understand. And, you know, use layout builder if you can, it's pretty cool. Front end component integration methods. So that's, you know, how are you going to do your front end and, you know, bundle your content kind of reusable chunks throughout the site, building a admin, a really great admin uh, interface, SEO, which again, is a lot of that's in the contributed space and then just migrations in general. So what's the effort involved? Well, it, depends. Uh, really depends on what the audit showed, you know, so what version you're on, what that gap looks like, what modules are already available in Drupal 9, or maybe they're not available and you decide you don't need it anymore, so you can remove that. And also Rector coverage, which is a tool that we'll talk about more, we touched upon. And then as far as complexity, you know, obviously the bigger the site, the more complex. I have mod lots of modules, lots of content, lots of entities, um, lots of integrations. You know, and then the more things that you're changing, then the more complex it will be. And then lastly, you wanna, you know, you, it will really depend also on the experience of your team. And are they familiar with object-oriented you know, programming and are they already familiar with Drupal 8? If they are, then should be fine. And lastly, if they're, if they haven't done a migration and they're going from six or seven to, to nine, then definitely that's something that is a very meticulous process and it's not that difficult, but it is uh, something that you have to be very meticulous. So at the end of um, at the end of this, you're going to have you know of your planning session, you're going to have some number of deliverables as well. You're going to know who's on your team. You should have some idea of the schedule and the cost. You should have an idea of what your architecture is going to look like and your migration approach. And hopefully, you're starting to put together some tickets so you can get going. And a year from now, you'll wish you had started today. And that is always the case. So if you're on Drupal 8, then yeah, no reason to not start. You have more wiggle room on 6 or 7, but if at all possible, if you can start today, you'll just, it'll be better. Finally, you're going to need to actually do the work and make that dream a reality. 
And there's a number of Drupal concessions that are going to help you with that, especially if you're not familiar with Drupal 8, since these are similar for Drupal 9. You're going to need to understand Composer and how to use that. You need to understand configuration management. Also, just if you have any custom functionality, custom modules, really understanding how you alter and extend Drupal from a code perspective. Layout Builder, if you're going to be using it, which I recommend, uh, you know, there can be some gotchas. So make sure you keep those in mind as you're uh, before you start building. Twig, if you're coming for, from six and seven, then, you know, it used to be PHP template and Twig's way better. So make sure you understand kind of some of the tricks for that and including some of the add-on modules that makes it easier to do Twig. And then migrations, and there's several migration talks. And if you're gonna do a migration, definitely watch a bunch of talks, read a bunch of tutorials. Really, if you haven't done it before, make sure you really understand how to do migrations. And here are some upgrade tools. And we touched upon some of this before. Upgrade status, and we'll show a screenshot in a bit, uh, is a module that you would install on your site on either seven or eight. Module Upgrader is a module that you would install on your site for Drupal 7. Upgrade Reg Rector is a module you would install on your site for Drupal 8, and that runs uh, Dru Drupal Rector, Rector, which is a command line tool. Then there's change records that explain like all the code that's been deprecated in case Drupal record rector doesn't have the automated tool uh, or rule in order to fix that for you that you can um, just do it yourself. Of course, you've got drupal.org information, um, upgrade status works for custom code or contributed code, deprecation status will show screenshot in a bit, and upgrade rector we talked about. Then for migration, there's the core tools, the migrate Drupal uh, core tools, and then there's the contributed tools that you can use in order to have the command line support and extra plugins and things like that. So if you're going to figure out if your contributed projects are supported by Drupal 9, there's another number of places to look, and these are not exactly in order, but um, there's a lot of, of information you can get from other places. So obviously, if you go to the project page on Drupal.org, if it shows it has a Drupal 9 release, you're good to go. Note that it may say Drupal 8, blah, 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 but that is a Drupal 9 supported release. So that can be a little bit confusing if you haven't seen that before. The other thing is on the project, if they don't have a release yet that's available for Drupal 9, they might have a uh, section that says kind of what their plan is for Drupal 9 and might link off to a roadmap issue and you can read that and get an idea of, of where they're at and maybe when the release will be available. You can check the issue queue to find existing patches that are for any issues for the module that may, may have haven't been, um, might haven't been uh, committed to the project yet. And hopefully those are tagged with Drupal 9 compatibility. That's the tag we're trying to use. Then there's the deprecation status tool, which we'll show a screenshot of, which you can go and just look for any, mod, any project and see what status it is, if there's a, a Drupal 9 version available or not. Then there's upgrade status module, which you can install on your site and then take a look at your custom and contributed code. And if you don't find anything that, you know, there's no issues already created with patches and it looks like you're gonna have to fix, uh, you know, something yourself for the a contributed project, you can obviously, you know, look at the change records, figure out what the change is, make a patch yourself, apply it to your own site, and then make an issue on drupal.org, attach the patch, and then other people can use it as well. So here's deprecate, deprecation status. It's a tool from Acquia, which is super helpful. 
you can go and just see like all the different projects that you know are ready to go and there's a lot ready you know roughly 3,000 so around a third that are already Drupal 9 compatible which is amazing compared to previous major releases another roughly third that are would would be compatible if there's just a one line change to their info file so that's super easy i mean you could patch that yourself if you needed to and then there's an, a, a number of others that have uh, other issues that need to be resolved um, some easier than others upgrade status install it on your on your own site and then it'll just tell you for your custom and your contributed code is if there's problems or there's warnings do you need to fix something now if there's rector coverage it'll show you it's pretty cool the module upgrader that is Drupal 7 only there's a little intro video if you watch that um, just on the project page Upgrade rector, if you're command line D, you know, prefer the command line, you can go and run it um, Drupal rector, but from the module, you can go and grab the code this way. And then the migrate UI tools. Uh, personally, I've always done migrations using, you know, writing code, YAML files or even pre before their YAML files. But for this, uh, if you have a more straightforward migration and you're pretty happy with your site, then you could use this uh, UI in order to, uh, you know, fill in your information, press a button, you know, it might take several hours or possibly days and then, you know, it'll pull everything over. Uh, again, if it times out, then you can run this equivalent tools through the command line. Then are you ready to launch? Uh, you'll need to make sure that you've done internal checks, external checks, and then kind of the last final countdown. So internally, obviously, you want to make sure you're on the latest and greatest of, of everything possible. And that upgrade status shows, you know, everything looks green. Your status report, just your normal Drupal status report, looks all clear. Security review and so forth. Um, and just the regular Drupal logs are, are looking good. There's no weird errors or warnings. Any external checking that you can run, you know, for performance or devices, you know, broken links, all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that you're, you're happy with the end product before you press the button. And then maybe you added some test content along the way. You can go and delete that. If you're doing migration passes, and that happens if you're doing a site uh, where you have the live site and you have your your other site that you're migrating to and the live site you might grab a snapshot of you know the data at you know from a month ago and then you're building the site you're building the site but then you know you'll go and you'll get that incremental information so everything from you know, the last month and you can pull that over before you actually cut over to the new site. Any kind of cache tuning, final testing. And then, I mean, you need to make sure you have a launch plan and there's tons of blog posts out there. If you just look up, you know, um, launch, you know, the Drupal launch or whatever, there's all sorts of blog posts that talk about all the things that you should make sure that you do before you do the final DNS cutover. And then, hooray, you get to celebrate and enjoy your site. So this, yeah, I mean, if you w went from 8.8 .8 to, to 9, you might not feel like it was that big a deal, but I think you should still celebrate. But certainly if you went from 6 or 7 to 9, you know, most likely it wasn't, unless you had a very simple site and you wanted it pretty much as is, um, it was probably a bit of a big deal. So um, you should celebrate your achievements. With that, I just want to say Drupal thanks and special thanks to my family, Josh, Jacob, and Aaron, and my mom, Merle. Uh, she's been staying with us. We're all in lockdown like so many others in the world. And another uh, special thanks to Gabor, who's the head of the Drupal 9 Readiness Initiative and has been doing all the amazing Drupal 9 
lead stuff. So um, big thanks to him. And if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, just feel free to ping me at anything at kristen.org and or on Twitter, you know, just reach out, ask me whatever questions. I'll try to get these slides up soon. And yeah, hope to see you at DrupalCon and I hope you have a great event. Thanks a lot. Bye.